is put your mind to it. Hey guys, what's up? My name is Todd Johnson, otherwise known as TJ Millionaire Mentor, and I'm in Charleston, South Carolina. And Charleston, South Carolina is a special place. Now, I'm from South Carolina, but Charleston is where my people are from, where my grandma and granddad and all those folks are from. So these are the Geechee Gullah folks here, man. Just good people, so much history here in South Carolina. And today is Veterans Day. So today we're gonna go meet a special vet. His name is Wayne. Wayne has an amazing story. And where I'm at right now is on a quest to give back. So we're starting with Wayne and we're starting in my from my roots right here in South Carolina. So let's go meet Wayne. What's your name, brother? Len Matron. Len? Yes. Matron. Yes. Well, Len, good to meet you, man. You, Same here, my brother. You sound like my people up here, man. My people are from uh, uh, Charleston, like my, my grandparents and stuff. They're from Charleston, but they be, they speak uh, uh, Geechee. Yes. And, yeah, yes, yeah, speak Geechee. So uh, I used to come here when I was a kid, and um, <laughs> I could barely understand anybody because everybody spoke Geechee, you know? And then when my mom got here, by the time she left, she was also speaking speaking uh, Geechee. So, so I wanted to bring my car down here, man, and, uh, and just ride through, meet some folks, um, and, uh, and talk to some folks because I know cars inspire people and kind of give them a different man. idea. Yeah, and they've never seen them. You know, they've never seen some of these cars. So, so I left the car, I left the Lambo back at the hotel. Wait right? a minute. Yeah. The, 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 it was kind of grayish, a grayish color. Yeah, it yeah, you saw it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What do you mean? Yeah. Oh, that's you. Yeah, yeah. That's so, good, man. Yeah, yeah. I left it back at the hotel so that way I could uh, kind of be discreet when I go to see uh, Wayne and meet Wayne because, uh, you know, Wayne doesn't, I don't want Wayne to know everything that's going on, right? We want right. to make sure he, uh, we, you know, he's uh, level headed and not, you know, uh, uh, getting excited for the wrong reasons and uh, just to try to vet out you know what he's doing there man so that's what I'm doing and so we're gonna get there and uh, uh, so crazy, I'm, I'm, yeah so it's a, it's a homeless shelter and and this guy Wayne has been running this thing by the skin of his teeth and you know investing everything in his whole life into helping other people I remember when I first came to the States my father said to me he said son you are a doorway you know so, so it's good to see. He said, "You are a doorway. You are a doorway. Yeah. So, which means when you go through, you you, you open it up for somebody else, yeah. and you got to pull someone else along along the that. way. You know. Um, and so, man, it's great, man, to see you doing that, man. It's okay. It, it's okay if you got the millions. You work hard for it. Yeah. I don't knock anybody for for what they've achieved in life. Yeah. You know. So it, it it's it's good, but to see a brother has made it, you know, and is doing well. Priceless, man. Hey, sir. How's everything, man? How you doing? I'm all right there. I'm going in there. Let me get my mask out. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're good, you're good. Sir, how you doing? How's everything going? Hey, good. What's going on? My name is Todd Johnson, man, and I, you know, I'm a vet. I'm and a vet. I'm, <laughs> yeah, I know. Day. They give us one. They give, they give us, us one, one day. They give us one. one day, yeah, man. Oh. Just want to come in and check out your, check out what you're doing, man. Heard so much about you. I started out as a drug and alcohol program, straight drug and alcohol, uh, trying to help guys out. It's an AA building across the, the yard there. So it was a perfect location to start. Yeah. You know, I know God directed me here. I love it. And uh, it's evolving, man. It's evolving now. Um, guys are homeless for a lot of different reasons yeah. other than just drug and alcohol. So that's what it is. It's, it's evolving, man. How many, how many beds do you have here? Right now, I got three locations. Uh, so I got 20, about 24 beds mm -hmm. in the total. I've had another house that I lost uh, on one of the streets down on uh, on Garrett. Mm -hmm. I lost due to the, the pandemic. You know, mm -hmm. guys couldn't pay, so I couldn't afford to keep it up. Mm. Um, 
And uh, so he had 24 beds. Yeah. Single beds, double double rooms. And uh, that's it. That's what got I'm it, doing. Got it, got yeah. it. So how do people find out about your place, man? Oh, word of mouth, man. Mm -hmm. You know, all the, the the hospitals, you know, people go into, you know, Trident or MUSC, they all go to the IOP. And, you know, we're listed there. Guys looking for a place to come after they go through a detox or something. Um, just word of mouth, man. It's, you know, I've been over, like I say, since 09, I've been doing this. So. And 22 beds? 24. 24 beds. It's 24 beds now. Got it. I had another house I just lost. I had uh, 12 beds I lost. And I actually had that house over there when I first started. The one over I, here? Yeah, that greenhouse yeah. right there. So I have had as many as 49 beds. Mm. Yeah, man, I had 49 beds. I lost that greenhouse over there. Um, and then just recently, I lost this one down here. It was another 12 beds. So Got yeah, it. I had 49 beds. Yeah, so you so you develop these, and the the idea is to give homeless people a place to stay. That, now, do they have to pay to yeah. stay here? Yeah, they pay to stay here. It's 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 it it turned into more like a halfway house situation. Mm -hmm. When I first had the concept coming down, I thought I was going to be able to find grant money and mm -hmm. be able to fund it. Um, as a 501c3, you know, I, I couldn't find grants. Mm. So I had to keep it going, get resourceful. So it's more like a halfway house set up. Guys mm -hmm. have to pay to stay here. Um, now, if, it was, if you had grants, they wouldn't pay? I mean, I had I programs set in mind where a guy could come here. If he didn't have to worry about the cost of, of housing, man, he could have just went to school. He, he could have went to try then, got a, you know, a two-year degree or something and got back in the work field. Mm -hmm. um, but it became, how do you pay the bills? Yeah. So guys got to work. Guys mm -hmm. come out of jail or whatever, they got to gotta get motivated. Mm -hmm. I got to kick beds, wake guys up in the morning, um, get them motivated, man. And, and you kick beds to get them motivated to get them up, man, and get them up. They'll go find work, get motivated. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it became more of, of a halfway house. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because, mm -hmm. I mean, I've had some guys that, that are, are going to school and, and stuff, but, but how do you pay the bills? Right. So it became, you know, more like a halfway house setup. Got it. So explain this to me, man. Tell me, tell me how you're looking at this. Listen, man, it's choices, man. Either you can keep living, you know, for, for the street, or you can live, you know, according to the word of God, man. It's a choice, man. You can have the gun in the street, or you could live according to the word of God. I love that. That's man. it. I don't even want you to look at this room. Like, you know, I mean, this two man room. Two these man, guys here. These guys in here. Don't no, don't film this. Man. And they take care of themselves, right? Yeah. It's, you know, they got a washer and dryer here. Dang, but like some rooms, some guys are needed like, in this. I mean, man. it's worse than this. I mean, I've seen, I've seen yeah, worse. That's what I'm saying. I'm in the middle. You know, I've seen much worse than this. Should have told these guys place. to shape up and stuff. And man, that's okay, shit. bro. I've seen much worse than this. Man. You know, I can point out some of the better rooms, guys that I know take care of the rooms. But uh, this is it. James, he got a single room in there. They met James yesterday. Mm -hmm. And then... Uh, this guy here. You don't have to bother people, man. Yeah, man. Because then we go in the room. We're not going to bother people. Yeah. So this is this space. But yeah, man, this. And people, how long How long do they normally stay in this Like one? I say, they, really, it was a 12-month program. Guys would stay 12 months. But George, he's been here, man, five years. Five right? years, yeah. He's been here a long time. That's all right, man. You know, it's, it's, uh, this is his house. You know, so, this young kid, man, was a gamer, man. So he set up this room. <laughs> this is it, man. He's, yeah. he's here, man, just playing his games. And how old do you imagine this guy is? This guy is in his late 20s. Late he 20s. Yeah, he's, he's in his 20s. I don't really like younger guys, man, because you got to get them up. I tell you, kick them beds and get them motivated. You so know, now, why do you no. care about getting them out of bed and stuff? Because I'm saying you got to get up. The guy can't just lay down. You, you know. can't just stay in bed. Got to get up. Yeah. Got to get motivated. Yeah. Got to find work. Got to get your life together. Thank you for sharing everything with me, man. I think uh, everything looks good, man. Definitely, you know, think you you worthy of, of all this stuff. But you know, let's let's you know we'll we'll uh, wrap everything up tomorrow, right? Um, so thank you, brother. Appreciate you.
so sorry. <laughs> I had to go to the bank, man, and take care of you, brother. And I had some work to do earlier, so, you know, we were running a little late. The bank was closed yesterday because it was Veterans Day. But, man, I love your story, and I want to make sure we take care of you, man. So, can we go up here and finish this thing off? Yeah. Yeah, yes, sir. Yeah? Yes, yeah. All right, come on, man. Let's go do this. I'm going to put my mask on. I still, I still don't know what's quite going on. You said it was you. It's, You're the guy. It's, well, yeah. so, so, I'm, so here's the thing. Okay. Yesterday, I told you that I was there to, uh, I told you a, a few things. I told you I was a vet, right. and that's true. I'm a vet from the Air Force. Um, I told you that uh, I was here to check things out. That was true. Okay. I wanted to check things out. And I told you I had to give the information to somebody else so they can make a decision. That wasn't true. Okay. What was true is I was checking things out, but I'm the guy that makes the decision Sorry. because I'm the guy that's giving you the money, right? So I'm TJ, millionaire mentor. I'm the guy that is, you know, the decision was up to me. Okay. And I just didn't want you to know that yesterday when I was looking at the place because I wanted to meet the real you and okay. see what your, your, your facilities was about and to be able to ask you some questions about your facilities without, you know, thinking about, you know, anything else. Sure. Right? So, so that part wasn't true, that I was just checking it out, but I had to make somebody else have the decision. I got the decision because it's my money. So, so man, you know, we, we're excited about what you're doing, brother. I appreciate it. I'm excited about what you're doing, man. I appreciate it. Yeah. And so, you know, so I know you're not a, a camera guy, you know. That's not what you do. You help people, you know, you spend your life helping people. So, you know, man, I, um, I appreciate you. Like, I think there should be more people like you. Sir. All right. Sir. All right, man. <laughs> so, thank you for, you know, sharing your story. I know you've been reluctant to, uh, to share your story, you know, and for have cameras and stuff and, and all that sort of thing, man. But uh, so what happened? Here's what happened so you, you understand. My name is Todd Johnson, right, otherwise known as TJ Millionaire Mentor. And uh, so I have, you know, a, a platform um, about uh, at the end of, uh, beginning of this year, I sold my tech services company, right? So I, told, I sold that company that I had been grinding on for, I started it in started uh, grinding on that business for 26 years. Finally sold that business. And uh, I started building a platform and, and doing things that I love, you know. I've always traveled, I've always loved cars, and, and, and so I, you know, I collect cars and stuff like that. But I want to make a bigger impact. And so every year, I, I help in certain ways, right? I mean, you give away money, you do different things. But I think that um, I wanted to start like uh, sharing the stories of the people that I help more. And so that's, you know, so I, I, I connected with a group of people. I said, I want you to find some folks that we can help that have a story that's worthwhile sharing. And I want to do it in South Carolina because that's where I'm from. So they, they, they gave me some stories and, and stuff. And I looked through some stories and I said, this guy, you know, I want to help this guy. Uh, man. How did you even get here? Like, what made you start this? God, the voice of God, man. The other thing is, is God. It was him. You know, to look back on it, I was in the car industry. The oh, really? The industry that I hated. Car? Cars, selling cars. You hated five, cars? No, the Five Towns Nissan. Was the, How did we get here? The sales, the, you know, the sales <laughs> of it, the, the business of it. You know, um, and I just, I hated the business. Right. And I remember it's just dishonest work to me. Yeah. And, uh, I, I asked the Lord, what can I do? You know, and he gave it to me. He said, Steve Austin, $6 million man. Like, that's how I got it. You know, we can rebuild these guys. We can, we have the technology. It's like, I'm, I'm an old yeah. TV buff. And he gave it to me like, you know, the $6 million man. Yeah. And I wish I could say I moved on it right then, but I didn't. Right. You know, some years went by. He was still 
doing some stuff in me. Yeah, I wasn't ready for what yeah. I was doing. And years later, I came back to him again, and I said, Lord, I'm tired of this industry. And he said, I already gave you the plan. It's an old plan, not a new <laughs> plan. I heard him say it just yeah. like that. And that's when I moved on it. So, but how, wait, so I don't want to just brush over that. How did you get out of Drugs. what you were, yeah. Drugs. Programs, I went through a couple of drug programs. Um, and then it, it, was, it was God once again. Yeah. That's the only yeah. thing yeah. I can yeah. bring it to. Yeah. Uh, the 12 step programs I went through, first step, told me that you know I was a, an addict and my life had become unmanageable mm -hmm. by the second step said uh, I believe a power greater than myself could restore me to sanity I was searching out who that who they were talking about in that step and it was God it led me to God right. um, but a lot of people get led to God man and they don't come out of the stuff that they're in so you know you can have God in your heart and still, still do struggle. bad things right and still struggle so so what helped you, I mean, you know, God was inspiration, right? But what helped you get out, like? It was God. That's the only thing I know, man. Truthfully, yeah. it was him. It, they, it was him. Yeah. I don't know yeah. what else. You know, when I look back on it, it's, 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 it's his patience because I continue to struggle in some mm -hmm. stuff. Not just grace and mercy, but it's his patience, man, that he took, that he had with me. Um, and that was it, I don't even know, you know. Yeah. I just, just gave me my life back. You, you know, know, growing up, I dealt with people around me that were alcoholics and, and right. were good people during a certain part of the week and then during the weekend, they struggled with alcoholism, you know. Uh, uh, my own personal story in terms of, you know, my mom being on drugs okay. for a time. And, uh, and, and, and God's always been in my mom, and, you know, people have always prayed for my mom, we've always prayed for her. But there were some specific things that had to happen for her to come out of whatever it was that she came out of. So, because, you know, God, you know, does things, and things, you know, it takes action. Because if, because what I, you know, like what I, Sometimes people just say, hey, look, I'm just going to pray. Or, right, I'm just, right, it's this right. guy. And that's great, but you got to do some more, right? Okay. You know? So what did you do well, to get I, out I, of... Getting out, my process was... And, and I'm was, not, no, no, and I'm I not trying to minimize to God no. because I get that, right? Yeah. I'm just trying to understand what you mean. When I say, say yeah. I mean, I went to a drug program. You know, I went to a couple of drug programs. Mm -hmm. um, and got out of those programs, it's, it's, it was the steps of Narcotics Anonymous. And I'm going to go right back to God because <laughs> the second step of the program is what did it for me. Yeah. Do you understand? Yeah. Like the first step. And what's the second step? The second step that I believe a power greater than myself can restore me to sanity. I love it. I searched that step out. The first step, no one can t could have taught me that. Right. You know, you have to come to that. The yeah. program can't teach you that. My place can't tell you that right. you're an addict mm -hmm. or your life is unmanageable. You know, I, I got a guy. How can I tell you your life is unmanageable? I got a guy that could sit down in, in my office, man, and tell me that I could always find a meal in the dumpster. You know, it's a little harder in the summertime, but I can always find it in the wintertime. How can I tell him his life is not manageable right, right, to right. him? Into, right, but I it's it. the second step. That yeah. was the second step. Like you're a success story, a major success story. Someone like, that's gone like, through AA and gone through clean, all the man. stuff. You've yeah. stayed clean. How many it's years a, have you been clean? Over 15 years. Love it, love yes, it. Sir. And yes, now sir. you're doing what you do. So what's been like some of your favorite success stories that's come out of your program? It's a couple, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Tell me about them, bro. It's a couple, man. You know, I got more more, more stories, man, of failures than success, man, right. if I look at it. Right. It's a couple of guys, man, that come out of there. They came through there, man, using, and they managed to stay clean. You know, guy's got a little construction company now, man, and he comes through. He's hiring people in from the house. Um, there's a couple of How success stories, man. That's all right. You know, I tell you about a guy named Carl, man. His story is major. You understand? I, when, when, when these guys asked me for a story, I wanted to give him a call. 
because his story is amazing, man. He's on dialysis now. You know, he's managed to find a job at, at Mercedes, man. He's working at Mercedes, man. you know, going to dialysis three times a week, totally dependent on, on dialysis, man. He had a transplant and his body rejected it. And, you know, so now he's totally dependent on dialysis, man. But he gets up every day, man, and he's, he's going. To, it's, there's a couple of stories, yeah. you know. Yeah. So, but was he like, uh, what, what was he rehab? Was he rehabbing from something? He or? came in. No, he, he, he wasn't drug related. Like I say, the place has evolved, and I had guys who were just homeless for a number of different reasons. His story was that. Mm -hmm. You know, his story wasn't drug use. Um, but there are quite a few stories, man, of guys who, who got it back together yeah. and, and are living clean and sober today. That's What's it. the worst story? What's the saddest story? That you think recent story, yeah. recent story, you know, due to the virus, due to co coronavirus, I had a guy, man, you know, these guys were, everybody was waiting for the stimulus money, you know, that's the recent story. There's so many of them, man, that I can point out, but this one, this guy, you know, got that money and went off the deep end, man, and OD killed himself wow. when he got the stimulus money. You know, it was a, that money was a blessing to some and it's a curse to some. He couldn't handle that extra $1,200 and he's gone. Something somebody told me a long time ago, man, he, uh, when I moved to the Dominican Republic and I started like uh, giving money to schools and stuff like that, and we go to the Haitian communities and, and give money and, and help people and things like that. I give people a job. I give guys a job they'd end up stealing from me and you know, I have to put a guy in jail and all types of crazy stuff. And the guy told me, he said, the hardest thing there is to do is help someone, you know? He said, wow. and so you do that. You know, so you're spending your life helping people. So I got a couple questions for you. One, I want to know how you do it. Like, why haven't you just stopped and just gone away and just said quit? Because you can go out and figure out a way to make money. You're obviously a very smart guy, capable, know how to manage things, right? You know, how has this heartbreak not prevented you from continuing to do this? I mean, you know, I've had dogs in the yard, man. You try to feed them and they bite you, man. <laughs> I mean, but but then there's this one guy, man. This one guy, man, that gives you the hope, man. There's, there's one guy, man, that you see get it together, man. And, and and it's worth it. It's worth that. It's worth it. You know, it's worth it. All the heartbreak. Yeah. It's worth it. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Because if it wasn't for his grace, I wouldn't be here either, man. <laughs> and I'm back at God again. Because if it wasn't for him, like, yeah. <laughs> can I stop for a minute? Yeah, man. Yeah. Can I stop yes, for one yes, minute? Yes, yes, bro. It wasn't for his grace, then I wouldn't be here either, man. Real talk. Like, you know, yeah. I hate the sound, that cliche. I hate that corny, man, churchy stuff, man. I never wanted it. Yeah. I never wanted it. You know? Oh, God is good, you know? And I, I never wanted that church language, man. You know? I left churches because of the false stuff that I've seen but God's always been there he's real the church is a phony man yeah. you know I'm not talking about a pastor I'm talking about man God giving me my life back man he gave it back to me man and and I remember when I was like 50 I said Lord I lived this life <laughs> did what I did now and the rest of my life is yours I said that to him when I was 50. Like, the rest is yours. I gave up, man. That was it. Yeah. No more running, man. The rest is yours. Do what you want. And I remember that, man. You know, I remember times, man, when I was out on the street, it's even before I, I knew who he was, he had my back, man. Uh -huh. He always had me. 
He always had me. You say, what did I do? He always had me, man. That's it, you know? I don't know, man. I'm telling stories. You want no. me to talk about no, drugs? Just, no. <laughs> you want me to talk no, about man. my no, drug man, just, and my past? No, man. I just, I'm, 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 I'm his mercy. I, I appreciate that. I appreciate no. you, man. I'm not, man. look, I, I wanted you to share your life with us so we man. understood Can't what miss. you've, um, what you've done. The world needs more people like you, bro. Like, the world needs more people like you because people like you that are worthy, more than worthy, way more than worthy than anything that I can give you, bro. I don't even feel that, man. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I really don't. Yeah. Like, I, I appreciate it, yeah. but it's hard for me to even get that, man. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying? From my heart, man. Yeah. You know, I just, I just make it happen, man. Yeah. Just, you know, but yeah. This, Man, this I, look, I it. appreciate you sharing your story. I'm gonna, you know, this is uh, $10,000 um, for your business. This is a cashier's check. So there's no caffeine on this. There's nothing old. It's already paid. And uh, man, we want you to keep doing what you, you've been doing. And here's why we're giving you this. Because as we, we, we looked into what was going on, what we understood was you needed money. Dominion to, energy. Dominion, what's that? Dominion energy. And it's the bills. Yeah, Dominion energy. Yeah, away from yeah, that. yeah. So my my understanding is that yeah. all of this, uh, there's all of this back electricity stuff yeah. owed on your your yes, various sir. buildings that that you're doing, um, and so you have a plan, hmm. a financial plan to like a uh, to pay it month to month going yes, forward, yeah. but you needed to take care of this thing that was way outstanding. And if you didn't take care of that, it's kind of hard to do this. We know you already lost a building. Mm -hmm. And when we were talking to you yesterday, you said mm -hmm. that, hey, I lost a, billion, a building that houses 12 people. 12 people. The thing that stood out to me is I said, hey, bro, you know, so did you have 12 people? Is there a huge demand? You say, yes, there's a huge demand for, for low-income housing. But the problem is you're not making any money on it. You don't make any money on this stuff. you just doing it. And I ask you how you do this, and it's by the skin of your teeth. And every time I ask you, you say, God. <laughs> you know? so, so what I'm saying, man, is we're going to make sure we do our part because God is in us too, you know? Exactly. And, and um, so, man, so, so your story is amazing. What you're doing to help people is absolutely amazing, right? And, and I didn't know this. I didn't know this world, at this low-income thing. And, People spending, you know, paying a hundred dollars a week, right? And could I always wonder how do people live on social security on such low means? Yes, and so you have a facility that allows them to live with some level of dignity and humanity and, and have a place to live and even to have communion or, 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 or fellowship with other people if they want, right? Yes. And, and for some of them, they might not want it, but they got a place that they can live. So man, thank you for doing what you do. That's all I can say to you, man, is thank you for doing what you do. And I wanted to tangibly man. show my appreciation. I appreciate it, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. I've already shed so many tears, man. I, just, I appreciate yeah. it, man, so much, man. You know, it gets the minion energy off my back. <laughs> you know, yeah. it yeah. gets the minion. It makes it a lot easier, man. You know, yeah, I appreciate it. I'm gonna say keep doing what you're doing, bro. That's I got it. to, man. That's I it. gotta do it. Man. You got to. I gotta do it, even if I don't want to do it. Man, I gotta do it. <laughs> Thank you, man. Thank appreciate you. you. I appreciate it, man. Thank you so much, man. Yeah. You know, I really appreciate it, man. Yeah, man. Thank you. You that's keep right. doing what you're doing, yeah, man. man. Thank Cause you. that's some amazing stuff, yeah. man. You, you get know? in a bind, bro. Keep doing your thing. Uh, I know you're you're you you are not asking for anything for anybody, but you get in the bind, oh, you need something, man. Reach out, reach out. You know, you know. I, I grew up all my life with nobody ever having my back, and I want to have your back. So if you get in a bind, reach out, brother. I appreciate it, man. Thank you so much, man. Yeah. Thank you so much. Rub my eyes, took me a second.
But I realized that I'm still the same man I was yesterday See, I made a promise to myself To make a change and better myself But I don't feel any difference and that's a shame All I want is to be a better Again, but I know the change. No, it don't come easy. All I want is change. No, it don't come easy to me. Thank you all for coming and help people out. Help the homeowner out, help everybody else out, and thank God for that. Thank you, Jesus. Have a nice day.